Hi there, this is Danny Flexen with Seconds Out Flexpectations. You should know by now, but if you don't, we're out every Thursday, 4.30pm, looking ahead to the weekend's action. This week, we're going to be focusing on rising talent, prospects slash contenders who are ready to take the step to that next level. Starting off, big UK or the biggest UK show this weekend takes place in Peterborough, not known necessarily as a boxing hotbed, despite the efforts of the likes of Cello Render. Um, but somewhere quite close to where I used to live for about eight years. I lived in Huntingdon, which is not far from Peterborough. And got, and not also not far from the sleepy um, village of Chatteris, which has borne some great fighters over the years, including Dave Boy Green, um, the, the birthplace and home for a long time of Jordan Gill, the Commonwealth featherweight champion, who returns near to his home and headlines in Peterborough on TV for the first time since becoming a pro. Jordan Gill, really interesting story. He's headlining this Matchroom Next Gen show. Trains under Dave Coldwell, though, up in Rotherham, um, alongside the likes of Anthony Fowler, the McDonnell brothers, and until recently, Tony Bellew, of course. Um, Jordan was born and brought up in Chatteris, um, half English, half Indian, um, which made him a bit of a rarity, um, a bit of a bit of a local curiosity, I guess, in Chatteris, which is predominantly, and still is, predominantly white. Um, I did an article with him a few years ago, or maybe a year ago actually, where he talks about elements of racism he suffered, but also how supportive as a whole the community were behind him. Um, he's got a big localised fan base, you should expect him to sell a lot of tickets for the show on Saturday. Um, but his dad, who's been a big driving force throughout his career, nearly turned pro himself under the Ingalls, however many years ago that is up in Sheffield, really ad a real admirer of that style, um, but just couldn't afford to give up the day job and and kind of put food on the table for his family at the same time as going on the road as it would have been with the Ingalls at the time. So he channeled his energies into his son, who was boxing from a young age, and Jordan's just progressed, you know, really good amateur, especially as a junior, and just progressed through the ranks to where he is now. Um, he fought Ryan Doyle on Sky back in October um, on that matchroom show. Looked absolutely dazzling. Doyle was favoured by a lot of people because he was coming off a good win over Reese Bellotti. A lot of people favoured him to, to retain the Commonwealth title. Gill completely outclassed him. Great footwork, dazzling hand speed and combinations. Really, really impressive from Jordan Gill, a fighter who's definitely one to watch in the featherweight division. He goes up on Saturday against a partly unknown quantity, but a Mexican in Emmanuel Dominguez, who's tall, aggressive, and will come to really test Gill. But has been beaten before, has been stopped, although not often. Um, so someone that Gill with his kind of style that relies on angles and speed and fluidity can look good against someone who's going to come forward and he can pick his shots against so you would expect Gill to get some sort of win either a wide points win or a late stoppage in front of a what we hope will be a vociferous home crowd um, in Peterborough not only that you've got uh, Lee Wood who not only trains uh, not only trains up in Sheffield um, similar to Gill who obviously trains in Rotherham but also lives with Gil, their flatmates, along with Leo Delanger, um, three boxers all sharing a flat, what could possibly go wrong? Um, but Lee Wood challenges for the um, a title in his own right um, against, again, an opposite and an opponent that we don't know a lot about from Africa. Um, but we expect um, Lee Wood, this could be finally his coming out party for a really talented fighter who hasn't always got the breaks. Um, so we'll, we'll look forward to seeing that one. But arguably the best fight on the card pits six foot five Richard Reactpour who we saw in November, I think it was, outlasting Sam Hyde. Sam Hyde was still winning on, uh, talented Sam Hyde from Manchester, winning on the cards, um, going into maybe the eighth round of 10 or the ninth round of 10, winning on the cards, but Reactpour had inflicted a gruesome eye injury to Hyde, which got gradually worse as the fight went on and, and his corner were forced to pull him out. Good win for Reactpour against the odds. Um, he's very athletic. You know, six foot five. Trains under Mark Tibbs, who also, you know, steeps in history. Jimmy Tibbs' his son, but also trains Dillian White. Really good trainer, but React Paul's quite raw um, and he's improving under Tibbs. In the same way Dillian White did, you know, White came from a kickboxing background, had a lot of, and, and still has some flaws, but had a lot more flaws in the past that had to be ironed out by Tibbs. Tibbs is doing a similar kind of project with Richard React Paul, who's got the athletic gifts, tall, big guy, you know, muscular. He, but yeah, he'll be going up um, against Tommy McCarthy, um, technical boxer, former British title challenger from Belfast, Northern Ireland. 
Um, McCarthy uh, fought Matty Askin, lost on points, got dropped twice uh, back in 2016, I want to say. Um, so, but but put up a spirited effort, you know, no no disrespect to him there. But he hasn't been back at that level since. He's fought um, sporadically, he hasn't fought often enough, and also he hasn't fought a great level of opposition since losing to Askin. We would expect him, if it's kind of the best Tommy McCarthy shows up, to have too much for Riakpo at this stage of the young younger fighter's career. Um, but Riakpo showed against Hyde that being the technically inferior fighter doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose the fight. It's not just about that. There's other factors that play into who wins a fight. So it's a really intriguing battle between the two. and Arguably uh, McCarthy's last chance at this level as well. So he should come motivated to, to do a job. So that's a really good show. Also on Saturday night, there's a show at the Greenbank Sports Academy in Liverpool featuring a lot of the rising Liverpool talent based out of the Everton Red Triangle Gym. Um, they're promoting the show in association with Black Flash or the other way around. I don't want to upset anyone. Um, but we spent some time in Liverpool um, on Tuesday. Uh, we went to the Rotunda, obviously, but, but also to Everton Red Triangle and spoke to the majority of fighters who were on the left-hand side of the bill on Saturday. So take a look at that, watch the interviews, there's more going up today, I think most of them will be up by the time you watch this. Um, but Alex Dickinson, under the radar heavyweight, he'll be on there. A um, lot of good former amateur stars on there as well. And you can also see an interview on our channel with the head coach of Everton Red Triangle, Paul Stevenson. Boxing stalls, worked with the likes of Kevin Satchel, Jazza Dickens when they were in their pomp. Um, and Dickens may still you know, regain his pomp, I don't want to say he's passed it, Satchel's obviously retired. Um, but have a look at all that and that should get you in the mood to, to kind of read about or watch if you can get down to Greenbank Sports Academy and watch that show um, one last one to mention actually on uh, Friday night you've got a show taking place in Wales um, real kind of light heavyweight I'm really impressed with in uh, Akeem Ennis Brown also known as Riddy um, really great character um, long arms, skillful uh, you know, awkward, really, really great guy as well, really positive, charismatic guy. Um, but his recent record, you know, he's still a young rising prospect, but his recent record, he's beaten a lot of really good people domestically. Uh, the likes of Glenn Foote, Dara Foley, um, you know, he's... And now he's fighting Bilal Raymond, who's Central Area champion, although they're, they're competing for some IBF Euro strap or whatever. The belt's not important. What's important is that Akeem Ennis Brown in his last six fights has beaten like four domestic rank contenders. He's a really good fighter. I'm surprised he hasn't been made mandatory for the British title yet, held by Robbie Davis Jr. Davis Jr. obviously got a Liverpool derby at the end of March. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Davis Jr. has obviously got not a Liverpool derby. That must have been the sneeze coming that confused me. He's fighting Joe Hughes, who's the European champion, two matchroom fighters fighting for the British and European crowns. But after that, it'd be good to see Akeem Ennis Brown get his shot. You know, it may be too early for him. He's still young and getting better, improving. But he's beaten some really good people. You know, Foot's no mean feat to beat Glenn Foot clearly, and he did. Um, and Dara Foley, I think, was was not too long ago. That was maybe the most recent win. But Lyle Raymond's really good too. They're both twelve and zero. But I think. Akeem Ennis Brown's experience against superior opposition will prove the difference in that fight. I think he should win even, probably on points. He's not a massive puncher. Neither's Raymond. I think it will go the distance. But again, another British fight well worth watching. Just a quick note on the other side of the pond. So we're not focusing predominantly on uh, the young guys at the other end of the scale. Crafty Cuban veteran, uh, Eris Londi Lara, takes on Brian Castaño, um, trying to win back. Uh, portion of the world title at Super Worldweight. It's the WBA regular belt, so their secondary title. Um, but it pits an aggressive, stocky brawler, I guess you'd say, in Castaño against a you know, tricky, technical Cuban um, maestro, if you like, in Lara. That's a real 50 50 fight at this stage of their respective careers. So if you get a chance, make sure you watch that one as well. Um, we'll be back next week, 4 30 pm on Thursday. Uh, but let us know below. Who you pick out as some of the best prospects coming through in Britain today. It doesn't have to be someone I've mentioned that's fighting this weekend. But just let us know who you peg as the best prospect. Say, someone who's had less than 15 fights and has yet to fight for a title. Who's the best of the bunch and why? And we'd really like to hear what you think. Cheers.